Welcome to Free Media, I'm Robbie Suave. And I'm Amber Duke. CBS News' Margaret Brennan couldn't help but laugh in Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg's face as he defended the Biden administration's fledgling electric vehicle push. Let's watch. The Federal Highway Administration says only seven or eight charging stations have been produced with a seven and a half billion investment that taxpayers made back in 2021. Why isn't that happening more quickly? So the president's goal is to have half a million chargers up by the end of this decade. Now, in order to do a charger, it's more than just plunking a, a, a small device into the ground. There's utility work, and this is also uh, really a new category of federal investment. But we've been working with each of the 50 states. Every one of them is getting formula dollars to do this work, Seven engaging eight, them though? in the first handful, again, by 2030, 500,000 chargers, and the very first handful of chargers are now already being physically built. So that's the pace of government work. Um, <laughs> seven or eight currently, but we're going to have, what do you say, half a million by that's the end right. of the decade? Uh, I don't think the math quite works out on that. Um, it's what's been, going on here? Yeah, it's been three years for them to get seven or eight. So by my rough calculations, we might have 30 by yeah. 2030. So Glorious. well short of the half, uh, what is it, half a million yes. goal, 500,000. Um, what's amazing about this entire interview is that Pete Buttigieg is actually routinely mocked by Margaret Brennan for the ridiculous things that he's saying. Elsewhere in the interview, Margaret Brennan points out that most Americans actually don't want to purchase electric vehicles, which is sort of a, a wrinkle in the Biden administration's plan. She plays a clip from Trump asserting that fact and says he's not wrong. <laughs> and Pete Buttigieg goes, no, 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 he's totally wrong. And by the way, if they do want to buy them, um, they can't buy them from China anymore. There's like a 100% tariff that Biden just implemented. I would say like, look, I'm fine with electric vehicles. If people prefer them, then they can buy them. And once they, once or if they ever become economically viable for people en masse, that's fine with me. I don't have anything against them. It's They clearly should not be forced on people by our government as Buttigieg and Jennifer Granholm and everyone else are eager to do. Every time Democrats are asked about gas prices, that's their answer. Like, well, why don't you buy an electric vehicle? Well, they're not, they're not affordable, they're not available, and they're making it like almost virtually illegal to actually buy them from China, which like I know is our global rival and is not a good, is not a good country, but is making them successfully. And if people want to buy them, they should just be able to buy them from there or from wherever. But we can't build, we can't make things cost effectively in this country anymore because of the stranglehold of regulation. I bet you have to get, and he's right about that, that it's, it's hard to build these things because you got to get environmental clearance and labor clearance and everything, all the stakeholders and all the different agencies agencies and bureaucrats that have to sign off on, on just building this, um, this, this charging station. No wonder they've only built seven. I'm amazed they've even managed to build seven. It's pretty incredible as well that they have been massively subsidizing the entire EV industry in the United States and people still don't want to buy them. Right. You basically saw a, a minor uptick in people buying EVs in like 2021 to 2022, maybe a bit more in 2023. But the market's pretty much tapped out and that's with the $7,000 or however much tax credit that you get right. when you buy an EV. And then meanwhile, all of these manufacturers, the auto manufacturers have scaled back their uh, construction of EVs because they've realized that the market simply doesn't exist for them. So Ford and Chevy, which are two of the companies that Biden has repeatedly had at the White House to tout their EV programs, are pulling back on their manufacturing of them. And rental car companies like Hertz are pulling back on EVs in their fleets because surprise, surprise, when people rent a vehicle, they don't want to rent an electric vehicle that has a, a smaller range that you're able to drive in it. Um, you have to rely on a very minimal charging network. And a lot of people just aren't familiar with them. So when you rent a vehicle, you obviously don't want to rent something that you're not familiar with driving. And so all, all of these market forces are flying in the face of the regulations and the money that the Biden administration is throwing at the EV market. And even with all of the government money, they're not able to convince Americans right. that this is a sound investment for them. Because a lot of the regulations and just the bureaucracy, the red tape, are, are so exhaustive. Like, this is so 
Um, this is such a good example of the kind of Biden administration approach where we're going to subsidize something, we're going to give people money we're gonna, to, to buy this, we're going to give um, firms money to manufacture this kind of thing, we're going to use money to encourage it, but we're not going to change any of the, the red tape that gets in the way of actually building charging stations or, or providing this product. So it will still, I mean, this is what's happening with the microchip factories and everything else. Like they're trying to subsidize it, but it's still just, but because they have so much regulation around it, it's still too difficult to do. And so that ends up, so then we're just wasting government money, wasting taxpayer money directed by the government on something that they're getting in the way of, let, of, of the market allowing to succeed if it is going to succeed. So it's just a totally mixed up procedure. Yeah, and I think, you know, if they allowed the market to work itself out, probably over 10, 20 years, you would have companies You'll being have able more to, of these. to I fully believe yeah, it. They yeah. would be able to figure out how to manufacture these things more cost effectively. I think I'd rather rent one, frankly, to try one out if I was to see if you like yeah, it. I could sure. see rental companies. That's doing fair. It. Yeah. yeah. But I did want to go back to what you said about people should just be able to buy them from China. Yeah, because I totally disagree. Why? Because there's a national security issue involved oh. here. Oh, we poo-poo national security well, issues now? Well, I hear national security thrown around a lot. And okay, then what well, that let me explain that. doing them. is we violate our rights, but go ahead. Okay, so the issue with national security here is that China owns a lot of the mines in Africa where they get the raw earth minerals required to make the EV batteries, the mm -hmm. mining for the lithium and uh, all of the other materials that they need. And so when we do buy these cars from China, we are not only enriching them, but giving them further authority and control over these mines with rare minerals that are really key to national security because these are used for other things beyond just electric vehicles. So no, I don't think we should just say that China can uh, take over Africa because they have all these resources and then manufacture cars with the batteries in them and we just pay them all this money because they're the only ones who can do it cheaply. They do it cheaply because they have basically subjugated half of the continent of Africa so that they can control their mines. No, they do it cheaply because their labor and environmental and all that are more market oriented than ours. If we want to compete slave with them. Slave labor is more market no, no, not, oriented. Not, not slave labor, but actual <laughs> la where you have, they can actually build things and do things because they don't have the regularly, or the regular. Yeah, because people get paid $2 a day. Well, if that's why, agree that's to why, for that. That's why they agree to work for that because they have no choice. No, because the government is not, here the government gets in the way and says, no, you can't have labor under these circumstances, so we can't build anything. If we want to compete with them, we need to relax some of these, and I think we should. Look, I accept and agree that China is a geopolitical rival. I'd like to see us do, fine, let's do more trade with other friendlier countries then. Why can't, why can't, we, um, why can't we import more, more goods and services from countries we have good relationships with? The Biden administration and the Trump administration before is just like against trade and wants well, everything to be built true. at home. That's even we can't build that's, anything at home well, because of this regulatory that's regime. That's actually not true because when Trump renegotiated NAFTA and turned it into the USMCA, what he did was he actually did make it easier for Canada and Mexico, specifically yeah, in the auto good. industries, to trade with the United States good. so that it took away power from China. But to suggest that China is like, is better because it's less regulated than the United States when it's a communist regime that subjugates its people and forces them to the work political, for poverty I don't wages. With that. Its political system is repressive. Obviously, its COVID response is repressive. It's repressive to the Uyghurs and dissident populations. Absolutely an authoritarian and totally a rival of ours. But I would like to see us uh, compete against them by being even more free and open and able to build things. But Robbie, by the point a is, regime. we're never going to be able to compete with Shein making two dollar dresses because we actually believe that people are worthy well, then let's of working for, for a reasonable Singapore. wage. I mean, people, what, people, what, that's a left. People are worthy of whatever they want to work for and whatever the company wants to charge them. And you're saying the government should should get in between that business rule and say, no, I don't consent to this. That's not OK. I'm just against that. Yeah, I think there should be actually some minimum requirements on how we treat people in our labor force. Absolutely. And I think it's ridiculous to suggest that, like, again, that China is some stand up model because they don't get in the way of a corporation and a person who literally has to work to survive, well, I mean, they get accepting, in the way. accepting 50 cents an hour to make a uh, sweatshop clothes all day. But that's how, I mean, sweatshops are not, I mean, this is a libertarian kind of point, but sweat in the areas in Africa where they have sweatshops, right? If you regulate them out or say, oh, you can't charge people, that kind of thing, then what you just get is like people doing like on the streets begging or do, or like selling their bodies or their body parts for, for, for money, right? Like you can't just say, oh, we don't like that these people aren't working for enough and this is, this seems coercive or abusive, but like, 
eventually the the country improves and its human rights record gets better and it offers more. But China's but been, like but China's disproved that, that, that the entire middle. theory. China has disproved that entire theory because, as you say, these people are allowed to work in these terrible conditions. They have an electric they're vehicle human, market, and but they don't. But their human rights record hasn't improved because of it, which is exactly All the I point know is you just made. They're actually building things successfully, and it is a problem. I, I do not think they are not a national security threat, but we can't. I don't think we can compete against them by just being like, oh, we're not gonna we're not gonna buy stuff from them. If they're making all this stuff, let's empower other allies to make the stuff. Let's do more trade with like places like Singapore or wherever else in East Asia these things can be manufactured. But um, I, I don't think I don't think the response is to do what Biden and I'm sorry to some degree Trump and everyone in charge say is like, oh well we, we won't trade with anyone, but we also can't make anything here because we've made it illegal to do work. Well, I do agree that deregulation has to happen in the United States, and that actually was something that Trump did as well. He slashed, what was it, 10 regulations for every new one that was introduced. Yeah. That was a standing rule of his administration. But you More do- More slashing, slash, yeah. slash, slash. Oh, well, I agree. You do yeah. have to make it easier to manufacture things here, but I don't think it's wrong to say that in the United States, we actually believe in having human rights, and we well, obviously, do- obviously, yes. Yeah, so we do place some restrictions on the types of uh, contracts that businesses and laborers are able to have with one another. Right, we place some restrictions and you know we'd have to go over exactly what those are. I'm, yeah like okay, we don't I make people work for restrictions. Like people aren't allowed to work for 20 hours a day without a lunch break and mm, you know. Not allowed to. Yeah. All right well that, we had a debate on that. Tell us what you think in the comments. Uh, more free media right after this.